Welcome back, guys. Back here with another TV series review. I felt after watching all of Breaking Bad and reviewing that, the next logical step, the next logical show to take a crack at is AMC's other hit show, Mad Men. Um, just finished up watching uh, season one today. I want to say the strongest point of Mad Men, I believe, is the visual representation of the show. I think the visual representation is phenomenal. It's almost flawless. Um, the portrayal they're trying to convey, I feel like I feel like they're trying to portray a portrait or a painting in each and every episode. Um, you know, one visual scene that you can take away from each and every episode that makes it special or makes it above and beyond other TV series. Um, case in point, episode 7 of season 1, um, where Roger Sterling is hitting on Don Draper's wife at the start. Uh, I think Don Draper kind of catches on to that, and he makes sure the elevator is stopped, or the elevator is closed. So he goes out and he gets Roger Sterling very drunk. They have to climb all the stairs, and then Roger Sterling, once he reaches the top of the stairs and reaches all the head, exec head executives, throws up in front of them. I thought that scene was fantastic, was massively well done. Um, props to all of the crew for pulling that scene off, because I think that's kind of, that, that's the one shocking thing I came away with from Mad Men, where I just thought, man, you could just take a picture of that, a portrayal of that, and get what they were going for there in that one shot. I thought that was very well done. Also, the acting is phenomenal, um, especially by John Hamm, who plays Don Draper, who is the strong-willed lead character, um, one of the head advertising um, people for Sterling Corporation, or whatever the hell it is. Um, he does a very good job playing a confident, not really cocky, but definitely confident in his work. Um, he definitely a very, very smart, informed guy on the advertising business. He's definitely been in it for a while. He's definitely worked hard to get where he is, um, and he's not going to give up what he has easily, obviously, as he, you see in the show. Um, he has a little bit of a feud with Pete Campbell. Pete Campbell kind of tries to make maybe, you know, cost him his job. And uh, he's very strong-willed. He's very stubborn that he doesn't even really care. And he never seems like he's out of control. He's always very in control. And he never seems nervous. He never backs down. Um, like I said, he's very, very intelligent. Um, he's kind of the guy you definitely don't want to mess with. You feel like if you're messing with him, you're on the wrong side of things. And uh, I think John Hamm does a phenomenal job. Um, acting his character out and fully fleshing it out. He's definitely the best character in the entire series, by far. Which is something you really can't say with Breaking Bad. I think all of the characters in Breaking Bad, well, you could argue that, you know, Brian Cranston or Aaron Paul are the best character in this. On this, it's John Hamm. John Hamm's character is easily the best. Although I would say Pete Campbell is definitely second, just because of the hatred for the guy. You really don't like the guy. He's very disliked. Um, throughout the series. I think Christina Hendricks definitely is Joan Holloway is another fantastic character. I'm not a huge fan of Peggy Olsen yet. Um, I know she's supposed to be a very strong character in the subsequent seasons after this, the season coming up that I have yet to watch, but uh, I, I, I just, maybe I just like Christina Hendricks because I think she's super attractive, but um, she definitely does a great job as a strong little woman character um, to kind of counteract um, John Hamm's Don Draper. Also, like Roger Sterling and the other head guy whose name escapes me right now. Um, there's characters that I almost like, I don't, I don't really like. I don't like Betty Draper. Like I said, I have a hatred for Pete Campbell already, but I think he does a phenomenal job getting you to hate him. Um, the visual representation is, like I said, all, along with the portrait and the portrayals there, um, it's a 1960s show, so there's a lot. It's, kind of, it's not really a culture shock, but I guess for us now, it would be a little bit of a culture shock going back and watching all these things. Um, I definitely don't think I could drink scotch every day in the office, um, and I couldn't smoke wherever I wanted to now, um, not that I smoke anyways, but if I did, you know, you look at the 1960s, how it was very different, and I think that the screenwriters and the director, I should say the directors, really, really had that come across very well on screen, that you actually felt like you were in a different time period, I think that was very well done. Another thing is, Mad Men is longer than Breaking Bad, or long, it's longer than the first season of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was during the writer's strike, only had seven episodes. Mad Men's first season had 13 episodes, which means they had time to flesh out the story more. Um, I think they did a good job of using that time. Um, they didn't flesh out an extra character to be, you know, a, a, a running mate with basically Don Draper, but I think they did use their time wisely in that they did build up possibly a little more drama in the first season. They had more time. They had six hours more. So yes, they should have pulled off a better show um, with more fleshed out um, storylines. And, and that's what they did. Um, 
I'm going to say Mad Men Season 1 is a little bit better than Breaking Bad Season 1. I'm going to give it between a 7.5 and an 8. Um, I think it's a little bit better because of the extra time they had. I still think Breaking Bad is a phenomenal show. Like I said, I'm probably maybe the hardest reviewer on here on it. I mean, I was giving it between 7s and 9s the entire time. I never gave it one like perfect rating or anything. Um, and Mad Men actually was going to get like an 8.5 half through the season. I think it just kind of was definitely just another slow, just This is the slow burn type of show. This is kind of what AMC, I think, likes. And uh, definitely, they definitely are wise to get very good actors for this because with a slow burn show, you need something to make you keep coming back for each episode. And even if sometimes the episodes are a little bit boring, if you have those actors that come across very well on your screen, you will have people sucked into your TV series. I think that's a good thing that Mavin is. I think John Hamm just portrays himself very well on screen and makes you want to see what he's going to do next. And I think that's one of the very, definitely one of the best strong points of Mad Men is him. And it kind of makes the slow burn uh, a little bit more enduring. You can, endure, you can endure it a little bit more when you have great acting on screen, which you do have in this, even at times if it's boring, if, if it's not hard to watch. Um, but like I said, 7.5 to an 8. I'm very excited for the next season. And I think that's what the opening season should do for a show. It should get you excited for the subsequent seasons to follow. Mad Men Season 1 definitely did this for me. I'm definitely going to be checking out Season 2. Um, that's my review, guys. Tell me what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you agree with me, if you like Mad Men, um, don't spoil anything. Hopefully not. Um, hopefully don't give away any big major spoilers or plot points. I, you know, I probably already know a little bit too much. Um, another thing, one last thing. Shout out to Aaron Paul, my main man. Winning supporting actor at the 2012 Emmy tonight. Congrats, Aaron. Um, you were phenomenal in season four um i definitely think you're better than giancarlo esposito so i'm happy you won and i'm happy you didn't um other than that i kind of wish game of thrones would have won best round but can't always go what you want um but that's all guys i'll see you next time later